You've got a remarkable strike rate in, in Ireland since mm. Willie's been training them for you. I think it's up to mm. about 60% last year, not far off that this year. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Extraordinary. That's down to Willie. Yeah. He, he's, he's a master at picking the right race for the right horse. Um, and a good example yesterday with uh, Ivan Grozny. You know, he's, he, he, he chose a great race for him and he got his head in front for the second time this season, so that was good. Would he go for the four-year-old hurdle at Punchestown, do you think? Uh, he's talked about that. Uh, talked about it last night. He said, it just, you see how the horse is. He said, it might just come a bit too soon for him. Mm. Um, and you know, he's only a four-year-old, so he'll probably throw him out in the field now and let him strengthen up for next season. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, we'll have a fun, fun time next season. Let's focus on the, on the near miss in the Gold Cup this mm. year mm. With, with On His Own, mm. which was an extraordinary race, wasn't it? It was, and I've watched it several times, and um, each time I'm surprised that he came second, because the truth is, at the second last he started to go backwards, and at the last he was seventh, I think. And then he had this, he had this extra uh, you know, second wind and came up the, 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 the straight uh, extremely well. Um, I was delighted when he came second, if the truth be known. Mm. Um, I know there was some dispute about whether he should have won it or not, and, uh, but you know, at the end of the day you've got to respect the steward's decision, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was delighted with, with where he came. So, But he's, he was in a good place it was on his own. He'd, he'd won the Bobby Joe beforehand, and so you know, Ruby and Willie both said to me, his head's in the right place, physically he's, 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 he's well, so let's take our chance. So we did. And uh, so he's now going to go to the Punchestown Gold Cup and mm. see if he gets uh, goes one better. Yeah, well, but he's, he's, got, he's got he's got one very fierce opponent though. Good old Boston Bob. That's him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What Ooh. about what about him? I mean, I was just thinking, how unlucky was he not to win the RSA Chase last year? Again, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you've got to jump all the fences. If you don't jump, you don't win. So uh, it's just a shame that you know comes to this to the last. He got distracted and uh, you know tipped up. Um, he deserved to win it that day because he was powering ahead of the, the rest of the field. Yeah, including and Lord Windermere. Exactly, yeah. Um, and then the same thing happened at Punchestown. He was, he was making headway and then he, he fell at the, I think it was the fourth last. Um, but, you know, at home though, at schooling, I've been told he's a very good jumper. And that proved it uh, in the Melling Chase. Yes. So, you know, that bit of confidence we did when we took him hurdling and then we took him to the Ryanair uh, proved very, very decisive. And he's, he's a classy horse, without a doubt. He's got, he's got gears as well. I mean, you know, I listened to some comments saying he's a, he's a four-mile horse, he's a six-mile horse, he's not, he's not fast enough, he's a slogger, but he proved at the Melling Chase that he's, mm. got, he's got plenty of gears as well. Yeah, you need to be quick to win that over you time. You do, definitely, yeah. Round mm. there. Yeah. Do you see him as a future Gold Cup horse at, at Cheltenham? <clears throat> uh, almost certainly. Yeah. yeah. I think I was talking to Willie about it, and he's, he says he'll probably train him as a Gold Cup horse next year. Very exciting. Yeah. And, and on his own, the emotions that day must have been very high. I mean, there were a lot of people thinking that if you'd, if you'd pushed it, and the team had pushed it, you could have gone to appeal or... What, 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 what <sighs> were we, your thought processes that day? Technically, you, you could have done, but that wasn't the right thing to do. I mean, that wasn't sportsmanship, was it? It's, uh, you know, the stewards took a long time to make decisions, so we had to respect that. Um, my thoughts, first thoughts were, I hope that I get my money back and, and the horse doesn't make look foolish because, you know, it cost a lot to supplement him. Because you had him in originally, of course, as you We did. We had, we had him in um, in the early stages, and then when the Grand National Weights came out, we thought that that was his main target, so we, we took him out of the Gold Cup. And then when he won so decisively in the Bobby Joe, um, uh, you know, Ruby said, this isn't a Grand National horse, Grand, this is a potential Gold Cup horse. Mm. So because you know, we felt that uh, a, he had a chance of coming at least fourth, we decided to supplement him for that. And as it proved to be, you know, he, he came second and, and did very well. Um, but yeah, interesting emotions because, you know, during the race he was going great uh, up front, so I was getting quite excited about that. Then he started going backwards, so, you know, the, the emotions sank a bit. Then coming to the last, I thought, well, I've done my money in here. And then we ran up the hill and came second. It was just <laughs> terrific. And then, and then I, was, I was coming back to the parade ring and uh, Willie said, Graham said, um, he said, there's a chance here that we might win this. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Stuart's inquiring. You know, I, th I think he, he, they might just overturn this one. I said, well, if he does, that's great, but, you know, I'm happy where, where he, where he mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember standing next to Rishi Passad from Channel 4 Racing, uh, who was trying to interview me before the result came out, um, but because it went uh, live onto the uh, steward room, never got the chance. So uh, I, was, I was listening to the actual um, inquiry through, through Rishi, and uh, it was, I, I didn't have any real emotion, I just thought, you know, what will be, will be. Mm. So in other words, you were happy he got as well, he done was, as well as he'd done. I was happy coming second, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there's no real pressure on me to, to think anything other than that. What about Briar Hill then? He, he mm. went into the festival as one of Willie's big, big hopes, didn't mm. he? And um, to have that fall was a, was a, was a real setback. Uh, 
So where is he now and wh when do you hope to get him back? Well, right now he's, he's just uh, relaxing and uh, recovering from his injury. Um, you know, luckily it wasn't his leg he broke, it was his, it was his cheekbone, mm. so you know, that, that does mend. And so hopefully he'll be back at uh, the start of next season. Not Where's chasing. That's the plan, but you know, he was doing so well in that three mile race. Uh, David says he was just absolutely cantering. And what a shame he stepped on the hurdle and, and tipped up. Um, we might consider well, that. We might consider that, but um, yeah. I, I, I've always suspected that he's, he's, he came from the point to point arena, so you know, chasing is his game, so that would be my guess right now. But because he was going so well in the, uh, the three mile race, we might just consider that next season. Yeah, very interesting. He's a horse with a very bright future, isn't he? Mm. And as, as, as uh, Willie says, he doesn't do a great deal at home, but um, you know, when he gets out there, and, and more of the big fields as well, he, he, just, he just really enjoys it. Mm. How, how surprised were you when he won the bumper last year? <laughs> <laughs> more surprised than anybody else, I think, um, because I remember the day before, it was the, yeah, the Tuesday, I had two horses run for definite. There was um, Back in Focus, who won the four-mile race, and then Boston Bob, who, as you say, was doing very well in the RSA chase. So I rang Willie to say, how are the two horses? He said, all three are fine. I said, what's the third horse? He said, Briar Hill. So what's he doing over here? He says, well, I tried to find a winner's bumper for him, but I couldn't. So I've put him in the champion bumper and he's riding tomorrow. So I said, oh, I said, um, and what's his chance? He said, he's just over here for, 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 to, to make up the numbers, Graham. He said, I don't expect too much of him. <laughs> Even though Ruby was riding him. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, he said, you know, he said, um, he, said he does nothing at home. I, f I found a race for him. So, um, you know, just let's, if he comes in the first 10, we'll be over the moon. And then to win it so decisively, we were all shocked. I mean, you, you saw the price. The price didn't come down from, I think it was 25 to 1, That's 20 right. to 1. Yeah. Because we'd been saying to everybody, don't expect too much. So, um, and then we were all surprised. amazed. I think, I think Ruby's more amazed than anybody else. <laughs> well, I mean, this year, your two bumper horses, Shane's oh. Hill and Black Hercules, you know, oh. they, they ran extremely well, didn't they? Second and fourth. Yep, they did. Um, Are they going to go to Punchestown as well? They're, they're certainly down for Punchestown. We're hoping to separate them, but um, I think they've both won two races, so... They both have to go for the champion bumper. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they run, they run tremendous races. Um, you know, we favoured Shane's Hill more than Black Hercules because he's, the ground has dried up a bit. And I think Black Hercules needs more softer ground. Mm -hmm. But to, to get third and to be leading all that way on ground he doesn't suit him um, was, was tremendous. So he's, he's got a bright future if he stays fit and well. Yeah, they're both, they're both lovely types in the future, oh, they are, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. As well, they, both, they both came from the point to point field, so they both right. jumped very well. Yeah. Yeah, that, is that the idea then, Graham? One day there'll be uh, future chasers, obviously. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, what, what I love, Mike, is I, I love buying horses, either bumper horses or point to point horses, and see them progress through the whole of their career. Because, you know, the great thing about um, jump racing is that the horses can, if they stay fit and well, go from three year old to four year olds right up to the age of 12, 13, 14. Mm. So, and you, you can progress through bumpers to novice hurdles, novice chasers, uh, right the way through. So. I, I love seeing a horse go, go through all those, uh, all those gears. What about the targets for Felix Younger? Is he... We haven't found his distance yet, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I was going to ask you about um, that. I, I was watching the races at Cheltenham, and um, people say we put him in the wrong race. He should have been in the two-mile race. But I watched that uh, the Arkland. I think, he, I think he'd be taking off his feet in that. I don't think he is a very fast two-mile. I think he's a good two-mile, but a fast one. And he won his two miles early in the season when horses was getting prepped. When he beat Trifolium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But mm. I think that I think Trifolium improved a lot more than, than our horse did. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty sure it's either two and a half miles or maybe three miles as his, as his trip. Um, Are you tempted to try three? I mean, he's in the three mile one furlong race, isn't he? Is it the, uh, the longest chase? Mm, yeah. He is. I, th I, think, I think, though, I think Willie has talked to him last night, I think we're probably going to go the two and a half mile route with him. Right. At Punches Town. And then maybe step up to three next year. But, um, you know, he's, he's a good moving horse. He's, he's, he's got Plenty of speed, but maybe he's not top, top quality. And he jumps really well, so uh -huh. um, I think we're still experimenting with him. Where would you think he'd be starting off next year, then? Is he, I mean, would you be tempted by something like the King George at Kempton? Or? Oh, no, no, he's, no. he's not that quality. No, think. he's not? No. OK. No, so I he's just King, a smart chaser. King George might be Boston Bob's tr target. Well, I'm going to say he could be the one, couldn't he? Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. Graham, what news of Back in Focus? Back in Focus uh, picked up a leg injury after the uh, Cheltenham race. Uh, he, had, he has had slightly fragile legs because when he was with Howard, he, um, he, was, he was careful not to run him on, um, on fast ground. But we took him to, to Aintree and he, he got a leg there. So when we sent him to, to, to Willie, Willie spent a year getting him right. And then he had a great season, his first season with Willie, Willie and at Cheltenham. And then I say he picked up a leg after that. So, um, mm. so he's unfortunately one of these horses that you've got to be very careful with. But uh, hopefully he's back next season. Yeah. 
Again, he could be a national type in the future, couldn't he? If the ground was soft. Yeah. If the ground was stays forever. Good or or got firm in the description, then you wouldn't you put wouldn't wouldn't him take him there. No. 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 We haven't really spoken much about Prince de Beauchene. Oh yeah. Now, he, uh, watching the Grand National, he didn't seem to stay, did he? But he had a lovely spin round there, didn't he? He definitely didn't stay. He, um, he's, we always thought he was, he was a two-and-a-half-mile horse. He, he's won a couple of three-mile races um, over in Ireland. Um, but uh, when you put him in a, in a very different class, in a, a higher class, then he just seems to dis disappoint. Um, he didn't stay a trip. Um, you know, um, Paul went off him and said, the trouble was, he said, at, at about three-and-a-half miles, he just ran out of petrol and mm. just hanging on to him. Mm. Oh, jumped so beautifully, though, didn't he, on the inside He's a, he's there. a magnificent jumper. Yeah. I mean, one of the best jumpers you ever see, but uh, I see he's going to get his trip right. What about his targets? Would he, be, would he be running again this season, do you think, or has he done that? Well, he's, 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 he's entered in the Punchstown Gold Cup. Yeah. Fully enough, I have three in that race. Mm. Um, whether he's got the class enough to, to win it, I don't know. Um, but, you know, he, 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 he's one of these guys where he just surprises you now and again. You know, he disappoints for several races and comes out with a, mm. pulls out of the bag now and again. Like he won an entry in the three mile race. Yes. Uh, about three years ago, which we weren't expecting. Sure. So, um, but uh, we'll, we'll, see how he, we'll, we'll see how it gets on. I know, I know Willie's trying to find a two and a half mile race for him at Town. Okay. So, if you're left with um, just on his own and Boston Bob in the, in the, in the Gold Cup, which mm. of the two do you think would be the, your, your number one chance? If I was a betting man, which mm. I'm not, mm. I would say Boston Bob. Mm. Because I think he's slightly classier. Um, he's got, I think he's got a little bit more speed. Yeah. So, uh, having said that, only though did a great race at Cheltenham, so you just don't know. Great Lucky Bridle is a horse we haven't seen much of. I mean, it, last time we saw him, he was winning at Thurless in November. Mm -hmm. and he wore a hood that day as well, didn't he, when he came in? He did. He's a, he's a very nice horse, but he wants this better ground, so we've been waiting for the better ground to come along. And um, so, you know, he's been kept under wraps. Um, Willie's got a stable full of stars at novice hurdle level, yeah. so um, you know, whether he's going to come up against some of the, the good ones like uh, Vatour and Fahin, I don't know, but um, you know, we'd like to get him out one more time before the end of the season and uh, then, then give me summer's break, but uh, he's certainly uh, got a lot of pace and he jumps a lot better nowadays, right. but we've just been waiting for the better ground really, so hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll see him punch us down. Yeah, the strength in depth of that yard I mean, for that is, is extraordinarily yeah, scary, isn't it? Unbelievable, mm. so he's got some great horses there. Yeah. And Paul's going to send one over for you as well. Uh, Grand Grandioso might be lining up at the. He festival. is. I mean, Grandioso ran the three-mile race at Kempton about a month ago, and he just didn't get the trip. He mm. jumped. He was in the lead, I think, or second for a long way. Jumped magnificently, but then just tired at about two and a half, two mile six, and just didn't get the trip. So we all agreed that um, his his race is a flattish track, right-handed, two and a half miles, and so it's either Sandown this Saturday or it's going to be Punchestown. I'm favouring punch time because I'm going to be there myself. Mm -hmm. So I think Paul's going to put him in the wagon and take him across, and uh, we'll just see how he gets on. But he's, 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 going to get his, he's going to get his track, he's going to get his, his ground, he's going to get his distance. So I'd hope he'd, he'd run a nice race for me. Now, I've got to ask you, you've mm. had a lot of success, we all know that, and I'm not just talking about off the track, but on it at the moment from our point of view. But um, what, what ambitions remain for you, Graham? Mm. Uh, the Gold Cup, presumably, a narrow miss, you mm -hmm. know, recently. Yeah. Would that be top of the list of, of wants? Do you know, Mike, I, I always say to myself, if I name a race, I'll sort of jinx it. Um, but, you know, you, take, you talk about the Gold Cup, you talk about the Grand National, you talk about the Thumberland Plate. Um, I'd love to have horses in there competing at, uh, for favouritism and hopefully they get there and, and, and they do well. Um, whether I win it or not, I don't know, but mm. just to actually have one that's up there and has got a chance is, is, is what I'm aiming for. Yeah. You want something like a, a Simonon or something from Willie Mullis, don't you, to tackle the plate? Well, actually, I think I have one. Go on. Um, there's a horse I've got called Sure Reef who um, won the Grade 2... Um, hurdle coming from the back to front. That was an amazing ride by Ruby, wasn't it? Amazing ride, brilliant ride. Um, and Ruby got off and said, Graham said, this is a flat horse as well, you know, and Willie both, they both said to me, said, we're going to give him a flat campaign this summer. And I said, uh, well, and Ruby said, he said, he's as good as Simonon, Graham. I said, really, that's, that's a quite a big statement, that is. And uh, Willie said, I might aim him for the Melbourne Cup. I said, well, do me one favour. I said, what's that? I said, if he's going to win the Melbourne Cup, he has to win the Thumberland Place. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you put him there first? He said, sure, of course yeah. I will. So, we, so we've, we've got him in our thoughts on the Thumberland Plate this year. Unfortunately, he's got a leg. Oh, no, what a shame. So, he's got a tiny, tiny little tear in his tendon. It's not, nothing too serious, but it's enough to keep him off for the season. So, I'm just hoping that when he comes back next season, I might, might just have a horse good enough to win the plate. So, the Northumberland Plate 2015. 
Fingers crossed. If he stays in one piece. <laughs>